Hey everyone, I'm Becky. And I'm Sarah. And we're doing Big Green Book Reviews. Today we're talking about The Wicked Ones by Robin Benway, which we got off, I got off of NetGalley. I actually have physical arc. Oh yeah, nice. So this is Cinderella told from this perspective of the stepsisters. And so this is after the stepmother has married Cinderella's father and he, or Ella in this book, and um, he has passed away. And the sisters have dealt, Drizella and Anastasia have dealt with the fact that their father abandoned them in the middle of the night, which was sad. And it's right before the prince's big debut. And their mother is trying to make them be more enchanting, appealing. That's the word I'm looking for, right? Appealing for the prince. And they're going to these lessons for voice and flute and Drizilla, when she goes to her voice lessons meets this woman who is a scientist who starts to kind of teach Drizilla about different sciences and she's got like a really good mind for that and she likes learning on the flip side Anastasia meets somebody on the way to her flute lesson who works at the palace and they develop a relationship and she kind of develops feelings and romance with him at the same time they're dealing with the evil stepmother and um ella and having to go to the palace and that's like that's about it right yeah. i feel like i didn't describe it very well but i mean it's 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 i mean it's a tale that you're you, it's you cinderella. Know, like it's cinderella you know what i mean but from right. the stepsister's viewpoint and i i guess i enjoyed it like because I, I like the fact that she humanizes the sisters like right. I could definitely see how they could not only be twisted to becoming kind of evil, but like also like realistically how, you know, they had their own hopes and dreams and they were com dealing with their own abusive mother. Well, and I think that she makes it that they're not evil. Like they are very human. And yeah. I will admit, like I, I preferred Anastasia over Drizella a lot i don't know there was just something i didn't connect as much with the drizella story but maybe other readers will but benway is such a good author like i will admit like there were parts of it i was like eh, i mean i'd rather be reading about cinderella but i was like the writing was so good it kind of kept pulling you along well and i definitely think that anastasia is more likable than drizella um but they each kind of shown in their own light as far as like you could really kind of feel for each of them. Right. Well, I mean, and obviously you feel, you feel for Ella. Right. Like. Right. Well, and Drizella but... remembered her father and remembered her father leaving. So that, right. that like the, there were reasons that was even like she humanized them and she gave their behaviors reasons. They weren't just like these caricatures of evil anymore. I guess the thing for me, like the thing that's kind of lasting for me is because I just recently finished it is I was disappointed in the ending. I get why it went where it went, but like, I was just, I don't know. I was hoping for something lighter and it, I was disappointed, but not, but when you say that it's part of a series, like I get why it's where it's at, but like, I was just disappointed. Not, and I'm not disappointed in the writing and not disappointed in the plot. I'm just disappointed that it had to happen the way that it did. You weren't satisfied with the conclusion. No. Well, and I feel like <clears throat> that you have to kind of really look to find out that it's part of a series. Like I saw that on, um, I saw that on Goodreads. And I might've seen that somewhere else, but when I, no, I wasn't on Goodreads. It was, I think it was in the net galley description. When I went into Goodreads, it does not say it's part of a series. And I was like, so is it has to be with the way it ended. It has to be. Well, and it was a little bit jarring as far as, like, putting it into the perspective of it being a series and kind of where it ends. Um, it's jarring to know, like, where this story takes place in the general Cinderella story. Right. Well, and that's, I'm not 100% sure how it fits in with the general Cinderella I have an idea, but I don't really want to get too much into it because I don't want to give anything away. Right. But, like, when we when I hit stop, you'll you'll tell me. Yeah. Because I'm kind of like, hmm. Um, but I don't really have anything else to say. Like I said, I mean, like it's a Robin Benway book. The characters are well developed. The setting is well done. The writing, yeah. the, the writing is really well done. It is just, 
I have a friend who's like, or and a co friend slash coworker who's really into Disney, and I showed this to her, and she's like, oh, and she went in and ordered a copy of it because she's like, yeah, she's like, I think I'd like that. Oh, well, um, the cover is gorgeous. The cover is gorgeous. The cover is like, the cover, like, I think that the cover has like the kind of appeal that if I got a copy and put it on display, I think kids would read it. So I don't have anything else to say. So should we just rate it? Yeah, let's go ahead. Our rating system starts off with five unicorns. We go down to two unicorns. If we don't like it, it's a horse. Where are you? So, I mean, it was adequate. I'm going to give it three. Like, it was adequate. It was I'm, okay. I'm going to give it three as well because, yes, the characters were well written. The book is well written. It's just not my thing. I think that if you're a big Disney fan, particularly the people who are enjoying these, like, alternative Disney stories, I think it would be, like, a four or five. But for me, it's a three. Yeah, it was adequate. So that is where we are on the Wicked Ones, and we'll see you around. See ya. Bye.